Hey everybody, and welcome back to Historical-ish. So I came across a list of odd and unusual deaths from the ancient world that essentially range from being killed by a tortoise to being thrown on a giant griddle. I really enjoyed reading about these, so I thought I would just share a few of the weird and ironic ones that caught my attention. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, but at the very least, thanks for watching, and let's jump right in. The first one on the list is Aeschylus. He was an ancient Greek poet and often referred to as the father of tragedy. He wrote around 70 to 90 plays, and actually only seven still survive to this day. According to Valerius Maximus, Aeschylus was killed by a tortoise dropped by an eagle that had mistaken his bald head for a rock suitable for shattering the shell of the reptile. What makes this story even better is the fact that Pliny, in his natural history, wrote that Aeschylus had been staying outside to avoid a prophecy that he would be killed on that same day by the fall of a house. Then there's Milo of Croton. He was a legendary ancient Greek wrestler and athlete known for his extraordinary strength. He won numerous Olympic and other athletic titles throughout his life and was also a military leader that helped defend his city against neighboring enemies. As the legend goes, Milo was attempting to split a tree trunk in half with his bare hands because remember, he was super strong. He managed to create a gap but got his hands stuck in the process. With his hands stuck, he was obviously unable to free himself and was left vulnerable and was eventually devoured by wolves. In some later versions of the story, it is said that it was also lions, but either way, pretty ridiculous and honestly, extremely awful. Chrysippus of Soli was a Greek Stoic philosopher who made significant contributions to logic, ethics, and physics. He played a critical role in developing the Stoic school of thought and was considered one of the most important philosophers of his time. Apparently, he also liked to make a lot of jokes, and one story tells that he saw one of his donkeys eating figs and told a slave to give the donkey wine to wash it down. Apparently, he thought that that joke was so funny that he ended up laughing so hard he died. Um, yeah. Zeuxis was a celebrated Greek painter known for his innovative techniques and ability to create realistic and very lifelike works. His paintings were highly sought after in the ancient world, and his style greatly influenced later artists, but he essentially would have all these people come to him to have him commission works. What is funny about this one, it is yet another person who died of laughter, but in my opinion, something that is actually funny. An elderly woman came to him to commission a painting of the goddess Aphrodite, but the woman herself insisted on being the model for said painting. Zeuxis complied, and once he finished the painting and saw it, because remember this is an old lady modeling for Aphrodite, he thought it was so hysterical that he died of laughter. Empedocles of Ekragus was a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher, poet, and statesman as well, also known for being a madman. He made important contributions to the understanding of the natural world and is best known for his theory of the four classical elements, earth, air, fire, and water. What's funny about this guy, though, is that he essentially thought he was a divine being and was an immortal god. Everyone obviously doubted him, but to prove this to everyone, he went to Mount Etna, which, yes, is in fact an active volcano, and threw himself into it. Allegedly, the volcano then ejected one of his bronze sandals and made everyone realize that this guy was obviously just a nut, but I guess a kind of smart one, so. Arikion of Phigalia was an ancient Greek wrestler who won Olympic titles in 564 BC and 572 BC. Our story is concerned with the 572 one. He died during a match of the 572 Olympics, but was still declared the winner. He was essentially held in a stranglehold and was unable to free himself, so what he did is he kicked his opponent in the ankle, who was in so much pain that he made the sign of defeat to the umpires. While making this sign of defeat, which is essentially like tapping out, he broke Arikion's neck. But since the opponent did make the sign for defeat, Arikion still got the title of victor and won the 572 Olympics. Heraclitus of Ephesus was an ancient Greek philosopher as well, known for his doctrine of change being central to the universe. He believed in the unity of opposites and the concept of fire being the fundamental element of the cosmos. The story goes that he had hydropsy and tried everything to cure it. Finally, he decided to cover himself in cow manure and died. There are two different stories of how he died though, both being equally as miserable in my opinion. The first is that while covered in manure, wild dogs came and devoured him, and the second is that instead of covering himself in manure, he buried himself in it. This caused him to get stuck in the manure and suffocate to death, both ridiculous and both very, very miserable. Side note, a lot of these deaths that I can tell are deaths from famous and very smart intellectuals, 
which makes me wonder, one, were they actually that smart, and two, why? St. Lawrence was a Christian deacon and martyr, and he was one of the seven deacons of Rome under Pope Sixtus II. He was essentially responsible for managing the church's material goods and caring for the poor. He was then executed during the persecution of Christians under the Roman Emperor Valerian, but this wasn't just any old execution as you would normally see. He was essentially thrown onto a giant grill and roasted alive, but what makes this even better is that while being roasted, he was joking with the executioner and kept saying, turn me over, I'm done on this side. And what makes this even better is that he is now the patron saint of cooks, chefs, and comedians. Then there is Qin Shi Huang. He was the first emperor of China who unified the warring states and founded the Qin dynasty. He implemented a bunch of legalist reforms, standardized weights and measures, and commissioned the construction of the Great Wall of China as well. He's also that same emperor who's known for his terracotta warrior army that was buried with him. One of the reasons he did all of this stuff is that he was obsessed with finding the key or elixir to immortality, and that's also one of the reasons why he made the terracotta army was to protect him in his immortal afterlife. One way, though, that he did go about gaining immortality, or trying to gain immortality, was consuming mercury pills, which he thought was the elixir of the gods. As you can probably imagine, and obviously enough, this was the reason for his death, and honestly, it's one of the more ironic ones in this list. And finally, we have Simon the Zealot, who was one of the 12 apostles of Jesus. He was also known as Simon the Canaanite, or Simon the Canaanian, but little is known about his life, although he is believed to have been preaching the gospel throughout various regions, and that he ultimately met a martyr's death. This one is actually pretty gruesome. Uh, the ancient tradition states that he was tied upside down and sawn in half in Persia, because all of the Christians across the world were essentially persecuted. So definitely ending on a happy note there, but I thought I'd throw that in because in my opinion, it's one of the more interesting ones, but it's definitely pretty gruesome. All right, that about wraps up today's episode. I know it was a quick one, but I am in the process of moving. And unfortunately, I bought a puppy at the same exact time. So it has been pretty hectic around here. If you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel and check us out on Discord. We do have a pretty large community in there and we talk about some pretty crazy stuff. So come check us out, come hang. If you want to support me on Patreon and buy me a beer, there'll be a link down in the description below. But at the very least, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next episode.